Here we have the original sample made with 100% pure silica woven with phenol resorcinol. Smells just like phenol formaldehyde. This is the leftovers from the cup. Still smelly. Curling up a red. <laughs> that one seems to have crumbled. And this was that sample after burning it with oxycetylene for a good amount of time. Compare that to a nice sample of phenol formaldehyde, phenolic resin with cotton. I feel like it's an interesting pattern on it. It's like you would get after uh, an engine fire. Yeah. Can you get the flame away for a bit? Yeah. You can see the white patterns there. The crackling. I burned it from the outside here. And it's a bit brittle. We have ceramic, it's a ceramic matting, mixed fibers. You can see it's very hard for the resin to impregnate. Let's bring out the fixed duration samples. This is the phenol formaldehyde, your classic phenolic resin. Expose it to oxycetylene on the outside surfaces. Lots of cracking, not very durable, but it's burned as expected. And you can see here, some nice bubbles on the inside. Imagine that in your casing. I wonder if that's just off-gassing or, or that's the phenolic going into there. Maybe we can punch into that later. Silica and phenol resorcinol. The white is from the pyrolysis, as well as the black is the carbon. Still pretty strong. And we have the ceramic insulation. Still pretty tough. Of course, impregnation is a bit difficult, but this one seems to have been a pretty good sample. And as you can insulate it, the rest of the, uh, the resin there, it's still red. It's not flaking much. I think it might do. We need to see how it works under pressure. But that certainly seems to have done better than this guy. I have a little extra little silica and phenol resorcinol sample. Similar stuff going on there. Can I break it? No, but it's still flexible too. Let's see if I can chop into this.
by carving through the inner layers of chard too. Oh yeah, that cuts away cleanly. Cut into the sample. As you can see, that's a little air pocket. And away from the heat exposure, could be off-gassing. After all, pyrolysis generates lots of waste gases. And it could be that the heat caused the resin to reach its glass transition point, which makes it nice and pliable so it can stretch out like this and then once it cools down it becomes nice and rigid again that's what I imagine and because this outer layer is not charred or burned it's probably what trapped the gases from going past further of course we have the fully charred sample here again And then we can compare these two. Here's these two side by side. Original pre-burning and then post-burning 20 seconds or so. Oxycetylene. Most of the material is still there. Of course, when you apply pressure, things change a bit, but um, we know that the silica performs well under pressure as long as it's well laminated. For point of comparison, I have here another post-firing ablative engine. You can see some of the same white formations and the black. This, I believe, was also a silica tape, not carbon fiber on the outside. That's a structural composite. But this right here is silica with phenolic resins. White char, black char, all the same. And still pretty tough. Now you can imagine how that affects your chamber performance. For another point of comparison, here's a chamber that I made a while back using silica and phenol resorcinol. And though it has been fired, it's just probably dark because of how long it's been sitting in Kiern. There's still some of the reddish of the resource and all. This one, I don't think I used enough hardener. Because I did it by volume for some reason, by mistake. So, it took a long time for it to finally cure. Here you can see the red color a lot better. I used red RTV to try to seal. Around a turned aluminum flange. The carbon fiber here is just for structural strength because the silica and the phenolic are not that strong on its own. So that's what the epoxy is here for. As you can see, the woven tube sleep used here provides a nice clear seamless contour to the very bottom. Hopefully it performs well but I haven't tested yet. If you're curious about how much the flange and composite ablative liner is scalable, here is a discarded flange for an old Garvey 5,000 pound engine. Really big. And the carbon fiber can grip onto the edges on the outside like this. Your silica phenolic composite liner, ablative liner, slides into here. You may have to turn it so it gets a nice smooth insertion. You can place your chamber PT through here and through your chamber. 